Hi, didn't see you there. Welcome to Advice for Celiacs. Last week on Instagram I put up a little wee question box on what type of videos would you like to see me do? Would you like to see like more baking videos, blah 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 blah. And basically instead of like full video ideas I got lots of very specific questions about celiac disease. Which got me thinking, why don't we just do sort of a like unsolicited advice segment from me. <laughs> now this is in no way going to be medical advice, this is just life celiac advice. And I thought I'd do this in a bean bag because it feels like the type of video that needs to be in a bean bag. I would love this to be sort of just like a friendly chat, like I'm just your mate giving you some advice about being a celiac, you know? I've got myself a cup of tea, I'd love you to get one too or a drink of your choice. Um, pause now. That. That was lame. Um, and I've also got a tiny little, tiny little bowl with a raspberry slice in it. Morgan, we haven't seen this raspberry slice on your blog before. <gasps> haven't you? How strange. Funny that. Hmm. And then of course I went to the effort to write all the advice questions out and put them in this tiny little jar for aesthetic reasons. So that's what we're going to be digging into today. Have you got your cup of tea? Are we ready to go? Good. Okay, let's hit the first one. What are your thoughts on May Contains? Is it just companies covering their asses? What are my thoughts? Hmm. What are my thoughts? What are my thoughts? Well, I personally don't eat May Contains and I don't think it's just companies covering their asses. Sure, a company could slap that on just in case, but I do know that there are companies out there that don't have gluten containing ingredients, but put a main contain warning on because there is actually real risk of cross-contamination on their production lines. Heaps of different types of crisps, Cadbury chocolate. So I personally don't eat them because I have actually been gluten by things that say may contain. For me it's a bit of a better safe than sorry. For some reason I have seen a lot of chat about this specifically from the New Zealand celiac page on Facebook um, and a lot of people just say oh it's just companies covering their asses and it, like yes it could be but it could also not be so I personally err on the side of caution. You do what you want. <laughs> Best, best gluten-free wraps that don't fall apart. Um, depends where you live, I think. So here in the UK, I like the ones from, where did I used to get my wraps? Genius ones don't really fall apart for me, but I find them quite rubbery, so I don't like really like them. I think the Warburton's I used to like, it's super easy to make your own wraps. Literally just like yogurt and then flour until you can make a dough, squish it, put it in the pan flip it. Squish it, bop it, flip it. I'd probably say the Warburton's if you get like a good packet. I feel like you can really get good and bad days with wraps though. Like sometimes you get a brand that you've been loving and then you get a packet and that's absolutely horrible. Next one. Are there any, I can't even read my own writing. Are there any common drinks slash food that are safe ingredient wise but not cross contamination wise? I guess that could be literally anything. Um, probably more commonly would be drinks like coffee, if the place that you're at uses oat milk. Lots of crisps are may contain, lots of chips and crisps are may contain. But it really could be anything, like it just depends on the on the individual company I think. Annoyingly I've seen a blooming pepper, like cracked pepper shaker that says may contain gluten and it's just entirely up to where it's made. I suppose yeah, spices, look out for spices. But I am going to make a video on interesting items that contain gluten. How to handle big social events like weddings. Goodness gracious. Well, you know what? <laughs> Firstly, if we're talking about weddings, a lot of weddings now will ask you to RSVP and put your blimmin' allergies on them and then they can like look after that. There is of course the fact that they might not take it seriously, um, but you can also prepare for the event as well and um, I always have snacks wherever I go and I'm not talking about just like a muesli bar, that's boring. Pack yourself some nice snacks so you're actually like excited to eat them because there is nothing worse when everyone's eating like beautiful, you know, pastries and like things that you can't eat and you've just got like this sad little muesli bar. You're like, oh, no, I'm fine. I guess I'll just have this. I'll be fine. So my advice would probably be if you're unsure that the food you're going to be getting is completely celiac safe and gluten free, just pack something nice for yourself. 
get a wee little one of those wee little lunchbox with the cute little compartments. Fill it up with nice snackies. I like to take, if you're going all out, I like to make like little cheese dough balls, like you got your hummus, carrots. It's kind of like you've taken the control back so it's something you don't need to necessarily worry about. But I've been to weddings that have been absolutely fantastic for gluten-free food. Like I've gone and they've like had my little allergies when they brought out the food, like they checked that it was my allergies. So some places can be really good but of course you just never know how it's going to handle so yeah I always bring snacks. Or have a huge meal beforehand. Stick around in here. <laughs> Advice for non-celiacs that have to live with a celiac and a TikTok famous cat. James. But in all honesty, advice for non-celiacs. Just take people's dietary requirements seriously. <laughs> if a celiac tells you, hey, this isn't okay for my dietary requirements and for my health, you'll be like, okay, I'm gonna listen to that instead of trying to argue with it. How to educate friends without thinking that you're moaning. <laughs> So true. Um, I'd like to hope that you guys have friends that would understand and not assume you're moaning, but it is easy for like us to think that we're moaning because it's so prevalent in our lives. Sometimes it feels like we're always talking about it. So how to educate them? Freaking just send them to me. I'll tell them. There's also like heaps of really handy videos and short clips and funny, easily short consumable TikToks that people make that you can learn a lot from. <laughs> so if you don't want to have to do it yourself, there's a lot of resources online. However, I think any good relationships have boundaries. So as long as you make it clear that this is your life now, it's serious and um, it might come up every now and then when you guys are going out to eat, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Like good friends will be like, okay. Actually, it is also good to educate them because so many people have celiac disease. You might find that one of your mates also has it. <laughs> That's happened to me. Tips for asymptomatic celiacs. How do you care about cross-contamination? I can't give any personal advice on that one because I am not an asymptomatic celiac, but I can totally understand why it would be just a lot harder to care about stuff like that. I think you've just got to really consider your health and your little your little wee stomach and your little wee veilies and, and your nutrients that need to be absorbed. And I know that's super hard to care about because it's not something you can see or feel. So it's something you've really got to understand within yourself that even though you might not be feeling when you eat gluten, your body is still taking a lot of damage. I don't know, maybe you could scare yourself into it, but I imagine it's a huge struggle. So if any asymptomatic celiacs are actually watching this and have advice for this question, please pop it down in the comments below because I'd appreciate help on that one. A little wee bite raspberry slice. Mmm. Delightful. How do you recover from being glutened? Me? <laughs> Personally? Um, I just let myself rest. For me it takes, it's a, like three to four days of like pain and bloating and all that. And then about two to three weeks of getting my bowels back to normal which is such a pain in their bum let's be honest just those first couple of days for me it's really important to be resting getting a lot of sleep something for myself that soothes me is tea like i don't think it helps but like for my soul it helps when i'm just having a nice warm cup of tea it's nice and warm in my belly yeah i also find i don't know if anyone else relates to this but i also find that i sleep so much longer when i've been glutened like I'm normally eight hours on the dot type of lady if I'm not too tired. Like if I'm just in my day-to-day -day life, I normally sleep about eight hours every night. Um, but when I've been glutened, it'll be 10 to 12. And so that really, that really tells me that like, you know, my body's working to sort of help itself. How do you respond when someone invites you to dinner at their house? No. I'm just kidding. Well, it depends if I know them or not. So if I know them and they know I've got celiac disease, it'll just be like, hey, remember I've got celiac disease and like can't have gluten and it's super serious. And there are actually, to be honest, not very many people I trust making food for me. <laughs> but for people that I don't know, I sort of just say, hey, I have very serious food allergies. I know celiac disease isn't an allergy, but just because that word allergy resonates with people more. And then I generally offer to either cook at my house, if I can bring food to their house, if we could just do takeaways that I choose, or eat out or something like that. Uh, it, it depends with your own personal comfort levels and like how you think that they will respond. But it, but look, at the end of the day, you've just got to put yourself first because, you know, you're the one that's going to end up with bloody diarrhea, aren't you? Not bloody diarrhea. Well, I'd hope not. I guess maybe some people. 
Oh, I don't know. Advice for washing dishes in a gluten flat. So just for context, this person lives in a flat where people eat gluten, but the person themselves is gluten free. For specifically washing dishes, I would have my own sponge and my own tea towel. Not all celiac foundation websites actually say you need to have a separate sponge and wash towel but I'm just a little bit cautious so I sort of do and I know sponges can sort of hold stuff some some websites say have your own sponge but some don't I don't know so I would say have your own sponge have your own tea towel and to be honest have some of your own dishes <laughs> I can sympathize with living with people that can't do the dishes for, to save their lives there is no anger like the anger I felt with the pots I've said not to use gluten pasta in and then you get out to like use for your own pasta and you rub your hand around and there's all these little bits all these little bits of gluten pasta still stuck on I know that rage but you know there can be people that are really understanding you can just be like don't use these sponges and tea towels maybe get them like a different color just so people know if you're able to write on them or something advice for going out to eat with friends and not making it all about your needs it is a fine balance, isn't it? Uh, okay, advice. <laughs> pick the place and <laughs> make sure you feel comfortable with it. But if you haven't picked the place, make sure you know where you're going is actually going to be able to cater for your food. In the past, when I felt a little bit awkward about celiac disease and I would, and if I was out eating with like friends and friends of friends that I didn't know, um, I would talk to the wait staff like on the side or like us to talk to like whoever's the maitre d' or manager that night and be like this is my dietary requirements let me know what I can eat just so it's not you know when they're at the table it's not all just to focus on you but now if I'm eating with friends that like close friends that know me I don't mind I don't mind making it all about myself <laughs> but in all honesty I found that I've been the one that's more worried about what making it all about me then people are actually thinking oh she's making it all about her i don't think people are going to think that that i think your friends are going to want you to be able to eat safely without having any reactions um so sometimes it's a little bit of like gaining confidence with yourself and other times you can actually manage it by you know walking away from the table picking the restaurant calling ahead you know it's a little mixture of both oh i just put that on my tea best place to buy gluten-free snacks other than the supermarket uh oh online there are so many places there are so many good gluten-free snacks um that are only like available online because maybe they're just starting out and they haven't been you know put into supermarkets yet i mean i would recommend um following instagrams like love free from the boxes that i get every month a lot of their products aren't products that you can find in store. They're products that you can only buy online and usually in a big pack. For example, Lexi's, the rice puff bars. Um, I think you can only get them online, I'm not, although I'm not sure. But otherwise, I, I, know, I don't know if you consider this a supermarket, but like those sort of organic stores, like Planet Organic or Whole Foods. Would you consider that a supermarket? It probably is, isn't it? Gosh, I would just look anywhere. You'd be surprised. My local independent offies and food places have just such like random things and there's occasionally gluten-free things that I won't be able to find anywhere else like there is a shop down the road that is the only place I've ever been able to find the Alpro vanilla milk it's like soy vanilla milk and it tastes so much like a um an up and go if you're from New Zealand and it's, it's the only place I've ever found that has it so I don't know just look around but definitely recommend looking online supplements you have to take being a celiac that is a medical question, so one for your doctor, but there is no like, if you're a celiac, you have to take this, this, this. There's none of that. It's completely dependent on your own body and what you're deficient in. So it could be iron, it could be B12, it could be... I've drawn a blank on any type of vitamins, but <laughs> it's definitely up to how your body is and you can find that out with blood tests from your doctor that are generally quite easy to get, especially over here in the UK. But yeah, there's no set supplements that you have to take being a celiac. There's definitely a lot of things you can be deficient in, but there is no set list on what you need to be taking. Last question. <clears throat> how to answer people who just want you to have a little bit of gluten? Smack it out of their hand. <laughs> Sometimes it's so hard to get people to take things seriously, right? Send them this. It's my TikTok on what happens to the body when you eat just a little bit of gluten. It's so annoying when people say that though, right? <laughs>
This is the face I give people that say that. You shouldn't ever really be forcing anyone to eat anything, to be honest. <laughs> you just have to keep saying no. And unfortunately, the reason that they're doing this is because they have no idea what celiac disease is and they have no idea what happens. So if they're open to learning about it, there's a lot of resources online. If they're not, just ignore them. Well, that brings us to the end of today's celiac advice segment. I don't know if this was at all helpful, <laughs> but if you would like to see another one and you have got a question that you would like answered, chuck it um, in the comments below or let me know on Instagram. I hope this felt like a nice casual chat. If you don't mind hitting that like button, if you enjoyed this video, that would be amazing. Just so it can get out to more celiacs and hopefully help someone that might be struggling with celiac disease. Subscribe if you're new here. All that jazz. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.